What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Like I alluded to in a little short video we put out, we have a small lean stumble with this carburetor here on this 318. It's a 650 double pumper. It's a FST carburetor. And we've went through and jetted this thing. We got the jets pretty close on it now. It's As you can see, it's sitting on top of a air gap dual plane manifold. But we still have a minor lean stumble at part throttle when you mat it to the floor. So to remedy that, we're gonna go up a size in the power valve. Right now it's got an 8.5 in it and we're gonna put a 10.5 in it. So if you're curious about how these power valves work, hang tight. Since this job only requires taking the front fuel bowl off, we're gonna do it with the carburetor still on the engine here. Pretty simple hand tools. All you really need is a 5 8 wrench to bust loose the feed line, 5 16 socket or a nut driver. You may need a flathead screwdriver to pry this uh, fuel bowl and metering block off, but I don't think we'll have an issue with that. And then you're going to either need a 1 inch wrench or some channel locks to change out the power valve. And also grabbed a couple of these spray can tops to try to catch some of this fuel in. So that's the first thing we're gonna take is to drain some of this fuel out of this bowl. Let's see how much is actually in there. Oh yeah, she's full. Try to do this without making a gigantic mess. Kinda under the gun here in a hurry because we're expecting some wintery mix slash rain coming in and it's raining as we speak so let's see if we can't get this job done in a timely manner the theory of this is once you crack one of these float bowl uh the bolts that hold the float bowls on you should be able to catch most of that fuel coming out of there. Try to pick the one that's sitting the lowest. Make sure you keep up with your gasket. Not too bad. It's going to dribble some that we can't catch, but... Well, we caught about half of it. We can use that to prime the bowls back with. That's why you always keep a couple rags handy. Stuff them up in the intake and let that be soaking up that fuel. So let's finish cracking these. Well, you know what? Since I've drained the fuel, I better disconnect this feed fire. Yours might be different. This has the old hard line style. So it's a 5 8 and yours might be AM lines. I need to convert this thing over to AM. Try to do this without draining the back bowl. There go. Here it's pretty straightforward, y'all. Just take off the other three bolts. And like some of these come out with the gasket, and some of the gaskets stay connected to the bowl, so you just got to be mindful of that when you put them back together. 
If not, you're guaranteed to have a little fuel leak. When you get to that last one, you want to kind of support your plug bowl and metering block. You don't want to damage the threads on these bolts. So we only have one that come out with the gasket on it. And as you can see, there is, still got fuel coming out of it. There's your power valve. So like I said right now, it's got an 8.5 in it. And basically all of these things are, some people overcomplicate them or overthink it, but. Break up some of this fuel. This power valve right here, it sits in this, I guess you would call it a pocket or a cove that's in the main body. Well, this pocket here receives manifold vacuum. There's a port. There's a little passageway that goes through that little cove down to the, the base plate that receives manifold vacuum from the bottom side of the butterflies. At whatever rating this power valve has on it, is when it closes. So you got vacuum sucking on this diaphragm here that keeps it closed. Anything below the rated value on the, that's printed on the power valve, which is 8.5 here, which would be eight and a half inches of vacuum. Anything below that, this diaphragm opens and allows fuel to enrich in the main well. So basically, if you just think of it as an on and off switch or a faucet on the sink, anything below eight and a half inches of vacuum, you turn the faucet on. It's gonna allow additional fuel to enrich in the main well. Anything above eight and a half inches of vacuum, you turn the faucet off. That's kind of a simple way to think of it. So as you go up higher in power valve size, you're gonna be enriching in the mixture sooner rather than later. And typically that's the problem with a, that's the issue with a, uh, a lean stumble. You'll have good cruisability driving around at part throttle, but then you go to smack it and it kinda hiccups a little bit and then it catches up what's happening is it's lean on the official the initial hit of the throttle it, it goes lean because the manifold vacuum drops you don't have enough booster signal to draw fuel through the main jet until you get enough airflow going through the venturis Trying to clean this thing out while I talk to y'all. Still got fuel in it. So let's crack this. Like I said, it's a one inch wrench. Or if you're careful, you can use some channel locks. Just, you don't have to kill it or nothing. And I keep all these, I got a bunch of spare ones in there and you see it come off with a gasket. Most time the gasket will stay with it. So I'll keep that. When you put these things on, well, let me give you a demonstration of how they work first. I did a video about this a while back, but it was just a short video. So as you can imagine, this was be bolted into the metering block and it sits in that pocket like that. Well, the front side of that power valve, it receives vacuum. 
and if you look close you'll see this diaphragm move as I press on the spring that's all it does that minor movement at ten and a half inches of vacuum or anything higher it's closed but as soon as it drops below ten and a half inches of vacuum that power valve opens and what that's doing is opening these channels there's two windows in these one on each side when it opens that channel it allows fuel additional fuel to enrich in the mixture until it sees anything above ten and a half inches of vacuum then it closes again it cuts off the additional fuel so basically like I said on off switch or you can think of it as turning on the faucet, turning it off. Anything below 10 and a half inches vacuum, you're turning on the faucet. Anything above that, it's turning it off. Really simple design. People just kind of overcomplicate it. All it is is a little diaphragm and a spring. It's basically like another needle and seat assembly in there. You can get these with four windows on them, a high flow version, but for a little street car, this is all you really need. So we'll go ahead and install our new gasket on it. And the way I like to do these is, you want that gasket to be kind of centered up on there. So what I'll do is I'll take and hold the whole assembly upside down and start it that way. That way, you're more likely to get your gasket centered up. And that looks good all the way around. So we'll take the pliers and tighten this up. If I can find my different pliers. Like I said, you don't have to kill these things. You want them to be tight, but you don't have to overdo it. Just snug them up. Make sure your gasket seated fully all, all the way around. It's not pinched up or caught, caught on anything. Looks good, so now we can wipe up our mess and inspect this gasket and start the reassembly. And this should cure our lean stumble issue that we're having. After park throttle, we, it cru like I said, it crews good. Sounded good. It idles pretty good. It doesn't uh, burn your eyes anymore. Don't really smell fuel coming out of it. It just, once you, uh, say you was cruising down the road, about 40 45 and you want to crack into it it had a little lean hiccup until the booster had enough signal to overcome the lean spot that was in it so what will initially happen is once you at part throttle and then you crack it you'll have a little bit of a pump shot you won't have a full pump shot because you'll already be into some of your accelerator pump will already be taken up but once you crack it you'll still have a little a little bit less if you're not at wide open throttle and that'll initially get you going but the duration of the shot's not long enough to overcome the low vacuum so that's where the power valve comes in. Just gotta be sure to get our pump arm back on there. Let's 
one that doesn't have a gasket in it. We'll take care of it first. Basically, reverse them here, y'all. Just be careful not to cross thread these bolts or strip them out. Do you want to over torque these? It doesn't take much to strip them out. That's why I like using a nut driver because you can't give it so much torque with these nut drivers. And then, if I do notice there is a little issue with a leak, I'll come back in with a with a small quarter inch ratchet and socket and slowly tighten it up until the leak disappears. You don't wanna go cranking on these things right away with a ratchet because nine times out of 10, you're gonna over torque them or strip them out. And just take your time. If it feels something don't feel right, take it back out, restart your bolt. I like to go a little bit each one. Try to pull that meter and block and float bowl up evenly. Hopefully that uh, little explanation didn't confuse y'all about the power valve. It's just, I like to think of things in simple terms as you can. You don't really need to overcomplicate it with Too much thinking. Let me put this feed line back on and we'll be done. We'll clean up our mess.